commentaries from the heart of Antonio Agnes. Today is the third Sunday of Lent. First reading, Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 to 17. Second reading, First Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 to 25. Last reading, John chapter 2, verses 13 to 25. Friends, our first reading reminds us from the book of Exodus. From the book of Exodus. Of course, the word Exodus has a deeper meaning because, friends, our whole lives, our whole life is an Exodus. Like the Israelites who had to move from Egypt towards the promised land, the life is an Exodus from this earth towards heaven, our real promised land, our heavenly promised land. And so, in land, we are making a journey through our own exodus for 40 days. That is why on this third Sunday of Lent, the church reminds us that you are on an exodus of 40 days of Lent. How far have you come? Is Lent indeed becoming an exodus for you? And so, to live this life which is a life of exodus, today the church gives us the Ten Commandments. You see, God gave these to the Israelites to guide them on their journey towards the promised land. And that is why we Christians here below on earth, on journey to our own promised land, also need the Ten Commandments. Jesus says there are two. He summed them up in two. The love of God and the love of neighbor. That is why if you look carefully at the Ten Commandments, the first three talk about the love of God. The last seven, the love of neighbor. That is why you see the Moses, we are told, was given two tablets of the law, two tablets, two tablets of stones, you know. So the one tablet had the ones about God, and the second tablet, the one about human beings, ourselves and our own relationships. Friends, the first one is important, the love of God. It is the center of everything. When we build our life with the love of God, the rest, the second part, will surely follow suit. And so today God reminds us, do we have him as our God, our only God? Because friends, today the temptation is to make money a second God, to make your job, your work, your employment a second God, to make your relationship a God. You have been reminded that these things are not God. God said, don't have any of these things as an extra God, not even a God, an extra God. So we pray to overcome the temptation of thinking that all life is about making money. Life is about being happy. Life is about getting what we want, you know. We make these things the center of our lives indeed. They become little idols that we are worshipping. Today God is speaking against that. We pray that we shall stand against them also. Make God your God. And when you have him as your God, all other things would be added unto you, as the Holy Bible tells us. It also talks about keeping holy the Sabbath. You see, when the, uh, the Bible talks about keeping holy the Sabbath, it's not just about um, um, trying, having a mindful, re- a mindful reflection. No, it's about worshipping God. Make time to worship God. And so it's not enough to be in your room, your house, and pray, and then uh, uh, read the Bible or follow radio, TV. No, no, no. Keep it holy, the word used there means participate physically in the worship of God. It's a worship. So make time each week, and for those of us who go to Mass daily, each day. But make time to worship God, to participate with the community in worshiping God. That was understanding, friends. We pray that we will have time, at least once a week, to make time to go out of our rooms, our homes, our comfort zones, to go to God, to worship Him physically with other people we called children of God. And then we have the ones about human beings. You see, it talks about parents, and then the sixth one talks about adultery. Today is one of the sins that is so, I don't know what word to use, but prominent, because it's being committed everywhere. Those who are married, those who are unmarried. Because friends, pornography, masturbation, all come under these types of adultery. We pray for the grace to overcome them. Because the world tells us everything is about sex. No, no, no. 
There's more to life than sex. God is what we need. We need God. We need God. That should be our chant, our slogan. That we need God. And truly we need God. We pray for the grace to keep all these commandments. Because friends, we need them. As a journey, as they say, as a partner on our journey towards heaven. You see, the church father so mind us that if we want to live a holy life, learn every day at the end of each day to sit down quietly and ask yourself, judge yourself by the Ten Commandments. Mention them one by one and see where you fall. Indeed, you find your feet in your spiritual life. That is why when you are going for confession, it's also recommended. You know, before you go for any confession, go through the Ten Commandments and ask yourself, where are you in these commandments? If I were to locate your presence, you were able to locate yourself. You did locate your presence before God. So we pray for the grace to keep them. They are so relevant. I will even ask you to learn them, know them by heart, by, from memory, because we need them. And then, try to become, indeed, live the Ten Commandments. Let's say, live the Ten Commandments. When you're able to live them, we are living all the laws and the commandments. Indeed, we are living the love of God. And so we pray for this grace as we go to the rest of the Lent in days that we will come to Easter better than before, holier than before, closer to God than before. Just as Jesus reminds us in the gas wedding that our temples are indeed ourselves. The question is, are you making your temple a marketplace, as Jesus said in the gas wedding? Letting everything? You don't mind? No. Enough is enough, Jesus tells us today. Let us not make our bodies marketplaces because they are temples of God. We should become indeed a prayer itself. Our life should become prayer by itself. And so we pray for the temptation to let everything, to turn our lives into a marketplace. We don't need market lives. We need a prayer life. And so we pray, Father, you are the grace to live lives fully united with you. Help us overcome every temptation to live lives that make us look like we are marketing our lives, marketing ourselves. But Father, may we have the choice to choose you and you alone. May you be the center of our lives. May our lives be always a prayer before you. This we make in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise be Jesus Christ.